Welcome to Amsterdam and KubeCon Cloud Native Con 2023. Join John Furrier, Savannah Peterson, Rob Streche, and Yu Pizka as the Cube covers the largest conference on Kubernetes, cloud native, and open source technologies together with developers, engineers, and IT leaders from around the globe. Live coverage of KubeCon Cloud Native Con 2023 is made possible by the support of Red Hat, the CNCF, and its ecosystem partners. I guess, yeah. Good morning and welcome back to KubeCon EU. We are here in fabulous Amsterdam. It's a little wet, not quite as sunny as yesterday, but the energy is just as high, if not higher, here on the show floor. My name's Savannah Peterson, joined with my new favorite co-host, Rob. Hey. What's up, Rob? Glad to be here. You staying Talk warm? I'm trying, <laughs> I'm trying. The weather's definitely not cooperating today. I wish I had my Silicon Valley like vest on today. I mean, you, you mean you're screwed up. Speaking of comfort vest, Vencat yeah. rocking it over here. Yes. We've got Vencat and Yella. We're going to have a customer story here. Going to be a really interesting conversation. But actually, since we were talking just before we went live, I would love for you both to explain what you do, we'll start with you, Yella, uh, to how you would explain it to your children. Right, okay. So I, I'm responsible, if we did not see for our managed container service, which means that we design this body thing. But what is a container? Um, so of course, I, I know about containers for a long time because I've worked with netload shipping uh, <laughs> even before Kubernetes was really in word. You, you saw the analog <laughs> version to, yeah. the, to the technical yeah. version, I love uh, it. Uh, so everyone uses the analog of, of a container ship, but uh, when I was talking with my youngest daughter, she came up, she tried to explain and said, well, there, so it's like sharing a power bank for my mobile and with all different slicks, but it's all energy. And so, yeah, yeah kind of things. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> it's, a bit, it's more difficult, but yeah, it, it, it's very hard to explain to someone who is not familiar with it, what it is, because it's very ab abstract. Up. But basically, it's, say, yeah, it makes applications run faster, easier, uh, and more flexible. <laughs> right, it does all the things you on your phone yep. and in your life faster and yeah. 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 It's, all the, it's all the stuff we don't see on the inside exactly. a lot of the time. Ben Cat, what about you? Well, my son always asks me, so what do you actually do? <laughs> right, so I tried explaining to him, then I said I work for a company called Portworks. So for a long time he thought I, I was a worker in a harbor moving boxes. <laughs> <laughs> right. Which I love. <laughs> yes. So what do you actually do? You've been there for a while. <laughs> I'm still trying to figure it out. Now. Yeah. <laughs> they just keep you around on the payroll just to see what yeah, happens Yeah, I next. just like show up and say, what the heck is going on here? You just put on your vest yeah, yeah, and everything yeah. goes and smoothly. And walk around, yeah. <laughs> cup, the coffee cup in hand, like, you know, no pointy hairs. Yeah. yeah. All right. So, yeah, uh, I run products, product management and engineering for Portworx. Been with Portworx since 2016. Um, kind of have seen the journey of uh, containers and Kubernetes and a good old Docker and all of the things kind of take shape Yeah, you shape came in right at that time. When exactly. Yeah. Right? So yeah, I've had a lot of fun. It's excited to see uh, how our community and the industry has evolved, right? And uh, I think, uh, again, uh, we're well on our path to, you know, massive adoption and, uh, and traction here. So yeah, excited to be here. But yeah, I wish the weather cooperated, yeah. you know. It was sunny and warm and baking yesterday, and now it's cold and drizzling. Yes, <laughs> we're back to normal. That's yeah. that, back to normal. <laughs> but I'm glad I have my comfort vest yes. on. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. Yes. Security I, I, security I'm from <laughs> here, so I, I'm used to this weather. Yeah. <laughs> no wonder you're so sunny and chipper. Yes. You, just, yeah. you just bring the sunshine from, yeah. from inside yourself. Yeah. Venkat, you mentioned something right there that I want to dig in, and I love that we did that intro, right? The kids, I, 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 no one, my mother doesn't know what I do. I mean, sometimes I say hello to her, hi mom, on camera. But other than that, yeah, uh, uh, I get it. But you mentioned you mentioned the ecosystem and you also mentioned maturity. And I feel like, I mean, I've been at quite a few QCons over the years, not quite as OG as you guys, certainly wasn't on a container ship. But <laughs> I definitely feel uh, that, the, that we've tipped over a little bit. The momentum feels like all the partners are there, the players are there. You guys are obviously bigger players in this space than some of the startups and projects that are going on. Do you guys agree? Do you feel like we're in a we're in a slot where I mean it's it's not just will we end up using Kubernetes? It's Kubernetes is a part of our operation. Yeah, I think it's yeah. uh, you know I mean Kubernetes is the new operating system of the cloud. Yeah, right? it's uh, not just cloud, but you know, for the data center, for the multi cloud, for hybrid cloud. So if you're building your infrastructure, and it, uh, or if you're building your app now, or even like trying to run your infrastructure, and if you're not running it with Kubernetes, you're doing something wrong. You need to reevaluate your strategy, right? Because there's enough uh, tooling and enough. Uh, orchestration that's built around Kubernetes and the ecosystem is uh, so healthy and vibrant and there's so many choices that are available, I think it's a no-brainer to run anything on Kubernetes, right? And that's where the industry is, that's where we see from our customers and we'll talk a little bit more about 
you know, how it's not just containers that are getting orchestrated with Kubernetes, right? Yeah. Yeah. We, we see this a lot with our customers as well, where we typically have our large enterprise and government customers who are cautious about these things. Uh, they don't, uh, don't uh, are not the early adopters typically, but now we see that they actually are moving towards containers, say, yes, we want to go there, please help us, because we have all these legacy of applications that need to go there, and, and how do we build new applications, and that's why we come in to, to build uh, to help them to move, uh, to get to, uh, to, uh, to using Kubernetes at scale, uh, but also in a, at a really uh, reliable thing and enterprise grade solutions to run their very business critical applications also. So that's what we do. We, we do, I always say we do the difficult stuff. So it's not like just spinning up a Kubernetes platform, that's it. We integrate it, we make sure it fits well into their environments. Uh, and that it is well supported and meets all their business needs, um, including business continuity which will get yeah. to where uh, port works place. Decreasing complexity is such a pain killer and it's really been the conversation and the barrier for Kubernetes adoption out the gate. Love to hear that you're doing all the hard stuff. Y'all have been partners for quite a while, five years you mentioned. Talk to, talk to me a little bit more about that, Ben Kat. Yeah, so and Portworks was a, you know, like a startup and we're trying to kind of build out our business. DXC was one of the critical partners for us to take us to customers in EMEA especially, right? And we had some very successful installs in some very large uh, European companies with DXC. And uh, so we have a long history of partnering and maturing the products together and making it work for our customers. And uh, after the Pure's acquisition, and, and, and Pure has a much bigger strategic partnership at DXC as well. And there's, you know, we are in a it's lot cool more It's cool that customers. that was happening on both sides. Yeah, yeah. Exactly, right? Made it easy to continue the partnership then. Yeah, yeah. And, 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 and expand and on it. It's expanded yeah. to yeah. global uh, level and to have more traction and, and work together. I mean, Pure is a very strategic partner for us. Uh, of course, we work with many partners, and actually that's one thing that we combine. We combine the partnership with Pure, with the partnership with other Kubernetes vendors and infrastructure vendors to really create solutions, integrate solutions that combines the best of all worlds. So, I, and I love this actually, I hadn't thought about the, the maturation of both your products together and collaborating on that. What's the communication like between you guys? Are you collaborating on your product roadmap and offerings and things that are going to go on? Tell me a little more about yeah. that. Yeah, so we have uh, like, Two week, uh, every week we have a meeting to discuss strategy, sub sales, also product development, technical questions, architectures. Uh, been working also uh, that's during QCOM. You're communicating a lot then. Uh, also all working yeah, together that's on awesome. or go to marketplace, uh, pipelines, potential clients, uh, well, all kind of things to really uh, address the market together. Uh, so for in our offering, so I'm responsible for our managed container services as globally uh, to provide those things. We include Portworks as, as our default solution for many of the, the, the solutions we build for our customers because it's, oh, we think it's a, a very reliable product. Uh, I was works just well. going to say, and why is it that default? <laughs> it, it works. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> uh, to give an example, and it's a Please. use case. So we have we had a, one of our clients, a German bank, uh, where we, as part of an outsourcing deal, we inherited their container platform, which was managed by one and a half person, uh, out, outdated version. Bless that person, uh, yeah. <laughs> so what we did, we not only upgraded to the latest and greatest version of, of, of in this case, OpenShift, uh, put that into our leverage teams, that we have scalability, put in best practices uh, to really make it to enterprise. But they also had a need to increase the uh, con business continuity of that. Uh, because being a bank, heavily regulated, they can't afford to have those applications not run if something happens to the, to the data center where they run it on. Uh, so they're running it on premise in two DXC managed data centers in, in Germany uh, that are twin pairs. Uh, so we, then we looked at how can we accomplish that, uh, looked at various alternatives uh, and, and then decided uh, to go with Portworks, uh, implemented that to, uh, to provide a constant synchronization of the, uh, the stateful application states uh, towards the disaster recovery side, but also of the state of the container platform itself. So this is synchronized in real time, five milliseconds. Right. Uh, and so that in the end we achieved, uh, we achieved a, an RPO, so a re recovery point objective of Virtually zero for five milliseconds for yeah. the network, and then an RTO, so time to be up and running again in 15 minutes, which Ooh. is quite very aggressive, good. Very uh, good. And that quite is good. A and, bold um, claim, but also that's awesome. 
not seen before. Uh, we actually presented this also at a, uh, a other conferences, which was uh, pulled as well. And actually, it's, it's the only solution that we know of that actually works yeah. uh, and de deliver this. Uh, you can do that's backups, awesome. but then you always lose data. Yeah. In this time, you have a real yeah. And that was a great success. And we're now expanding that to using the same solution for other clients. Uh, we're using these things, working with Portworx to make that happen yeah. uh, and to uh, build up new solutions on top of that. Yeah, I think coming out of that, what's been great, and we, we had uh, your, your uh, colleague on yesterday talking about some of the more trends and some of the pillars that you're going You mean into. my boss. Yeah, I, you know, I, 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 you know, we're all equals here, this is an open source. It's a very community, I'm trying to community be very community. driven. But um, so, where are where is Portworks and Pure going with this? Because there's a lot of a lot of really creative stuff going on in this yeah. industry. There was a lot of project updates just this morning. Uh, trying to keep up with them and try to tweet about them was like near impossible. But yeah. so what, what's going on inside from a product yeah. perspective? Well, thank you. You know that first of all, you know what Yala mentioned is that you know that like that is you, know, you can see how customers are really pushing the envelope on running mission critical workloads on, on, on Kubernetes, right? I mean, yeah. Yeah. that's, you know, when somebody wants a really significant lower RPO and failover and have that SLA, and they are putting their applications on Kubernetes, you know, it's way past, you know, it's not like just prime time discussion, it's like way, you know, above the prime time. I would, you know, like, that means it's not just an you know, early majority, it's like late majority, you know, you know, like kind of customers. So we see that a lot. And to talk about the future, we actually learn a lot from our customers and partners. So, you know, to Yala's team and other customers, we would learn tremendously from them in you know, how to build, what they are trying to solve, what are their pain points and scale, right? So, what we have, you know, kind of come to observe is that, you know, the, the market is, especially with the cloud native Kubernetes and the overall infrastructure market, Portworks uh, is kind of like a three, three uh, marketplace, right? One is our uh, self-service, you know, like DevOps platform uh, play, right? Where, you know, the, the the biggest challenge the platform teams have is that they have thousands of developers and very few platform engineers that support them. When you look at the resource imbalance, it's, it's, it's tremendous, right? I mean, how can yeah. a few people support a large development team, right? So making our the platform engineering's life easy, it's kind of our life mission here, right? Yeah. And we want, they are, they are the superheroes, that are managing tremendous, you know, different kinds of apps and making their life easy and giving them their quality of life back and enabling them to be successful is something that we take very seriously. That's our mission. Yeah, right? and that's a huge theme this week as yeah. well. It's a huge theme, it's a huge yeah. theme. And this is something that we take a lot of pride in to building the solutions for this, our platform teams, right? So there is a slightly adjacent thing that happens also is databases are hard. And people, and there are like, there's a proliferation of databases. There's a ton of choices. And almost every developer has their own preference for databases. So if you ask these organizations that are trying to support these modern apps, they struggle a lot to keep these databases running, right? So what we are doing, we're making it simple. Like, you know, we're kind of idiot-proofing the databases, right? So we're coming up with kind of DBAS for the masses, right? So you can run databases. You're full of little segments and taglines yeah. today. I'm loving it. I'm, yeah. I'm feeling it. You gave like a motivational speech two seconds ago. You've got, got some really nice one-liners. Really yeah. nice little transcript. Yeah. yeah. I'm trying, I'm trying. Yeah. Yeah. Thank you, <laughs> You're yeah. Getting warmed up. So, uh, you know, so the database as a service for the, you know, like it's for like, you know, everybody, like for DBAs who don't want to manage all these databases, for platform teams who don't want to own and, you know, like say, look, how do you troubleshoot like this nifty new database this developer discord and wants to run it in production, but the app, the user experience is tremendous with it. But hey, so what Portworx does is with Portworx data services and our, you know, single click DBAS anywhere, we enable databases to be running in production, zero, day zero to day two, and you know, from deployment to running in production, we also manage them. So we manage everything, all of the day two operations, installing, patching, upgrading. Neither the platform teams, nor the DBAs, nor the application owners have to ever worry about managing these in production. But the good thing is, it's not tied to any cloud. It's multi-cloud, you can run it on any other cloud providers, if you have a Kubernetes, or even if you don't have Kubernetes, yeah, yeah. Yeah. yeah, you don't need to even know about Kubernetes to run this. We handle soup to nuts, the entire management. And we can run your data center too, and it's fully managed by Portworx, and our partners can manage it. So there's a ton of options our customers get. Yeah. The other most important thing that is happening is kind of like, you know, Kubernetes is a phenomenal virtualization platform, right? 
it's a containerization platform, but you can also virtualize apps, right? So we see a lot of customers kind of going to kind of a bare metal Kubernetes play and run apps, virtualized apps in that. Yeah. And we see a big movement towards that. We're seeing, you know, seeing a lot of customers doing that. And you know, there is, there is, there is good, there is, there's a lot of economics argument, convenience argument, and automation argument. It cuts your OPEX down significantly and all of that, right? Hot so topic we, right now, yep, too. Yeah, yeah, and we see that a lot. And in these economic times, it's extremely important and critical that, you know, for customers. So the cost savings argument drives a lot of that too, and performance. And we see, you know, customers are perceiving Portworx as kind of essentially a vSAN for Kubernetes, right? So if you look at it, now Kubernetes is kind of becoming the platform of choice to run any workload, you know, orchestrate anything. So and Portworx kind of fits right in that, like where yeah. VMs or containers, you don't need to worry about, you know, the life cycle of data, a running database is there, you get, you know, like a one-stop shop for all of your data needs. Right, the the last masses, line. I'm going to be I'm going to be remembering that all, <laughs> all day. That's, that's really exciting. Uh, Venkat and Yella, thank you both for being here. This was You're very welcome. insightful. We've got a lot of taglines. We <laughs> can now talk to our folks, and, and uh, I hope everybody's life gets made easier through both the work that you're doing, and hopefully we're making your life easier at home, folks. Rob, thanks so much for joining me Thank for this you. fabulous segment. We are in Amsterdam at KubeCon EU. You are watching theCUBE. My name is Savannah Peterson, and we're the leading source for emerging tech coverage. <laughs>